Some Buckeye fans want Lincoln Keenholz to be Ohio State's next starting quarterback. And if the young man takes major strides in his progression in the offseason, he might earn the title QB1. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to an episode of Locked On Buckeyes for the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Thursday, December 7th in the year 2023. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. During today's episode, we will discuss another Ohio State running back that is into the transfer portal. And CBS unveiled their all American teams, and two Buckeyes found their way in this exclusive group. And if you're an Ohio State fan that is looking for daily, News, updates, and analysis sent right to your phone. Send the text to 614-587-7853. You will get a 14-day free trial when you sign up. The quarterback competition at Ohio State is heating up. There is a gap between experience, between Lincoln, Kid Holds, and Devin Brown. However, I do believe that, that this race in the offseason, in the spring might be a little bit closer than some people think. Devin Brown, of course, has been at, at the program longer than Kian Holes. Kian Holes is a true freshman who was a summer enrollee. He ended up finishing uh, his high school basketball season and also his high school baseball season where he was a uh, star in all three sports. I want to say he was All-State in all three sports as well. He was just a pure, straight athlete. And him being a pure, straight athlete is something that Ohio State might want to add to the repertoire of their quarterback, who is QB1, because if you have a guy who can sling the bo- the rock all around the yard and also is athletic as well, it's a great way for a quarterback to be successful. Who do you think will replace Kyle McCord as Ohio State's QB1? That is a valid question. Touched on Devin Brown yesterday. Lincoln Keenholz is up today. Why? Because he's currently on the roster. And I'm going to say this like I have said it before. There's a good chance Ohio State's next starting quarterback is currently on the roster. And the only two guys that fit that description as guys that are on the roster who could possibly be QB1 next year, Devin Brown and Lincoln Keenholz. Tristan Jebbia would not be in the conversation at all. He came here from Oregon State knowing he was going to be a third-string quarterback and his eligibility is up, so he can't even come back and play and start in the shoot if he wanted to. But one thing that we do know is this. Kid Holtz has a lot of work to do. I don't think right now, as it stands, he is up to the task to be a starting quarterback at Ohio State. I am also not going to make a statement and say, oh, he can't win the job. All right, please. <laughs> please. I've been watching sports long enough to know a lot of things are possible. I won't say anything is possible because some, yeah, I'm not going to say anything is possible. Uh, a la Kevin Garnett after he won a NBA championship with the Boston Celtics. Anything is possible. And I'm not doing that. I shouldn't have got loud like that. But, hey, uh, I, I'm not going to do that. No, no, no. Ken Holtz on the year has thrown five passes. Four for five. And I do believe the incompletion that he threw against Michigan State late in the game, the only incompletion of his career. He walked off the off the field on third down to Ryan. They looked at him like, what are you looking at? What are you doing? And Kian Holtz, I'm going to get to that point in a second, but Kian Holtz, if he wants to win this job, it's not a job he can win over the next few weeks. It's a job that he has to win in the offseason, January, February, uh, March, April, spring game, spring practice, summer, like just knock everything off the park, improve and show everybody, hey, my athleticism is not the only thing I'm known for. I am a quarterback. I am a football player, and I deserve to earn the right 
and possibly I have earned the right to be QB1 in Columbus. So there's just one thought that just entered my head when I was thinking about Key and Holds and going to the sideline after making a really bad throw. It was poor, man. Like, Ohio State's quarterbacks this year occasionally makes, like, really bad throws, really bad reads, really bad decisions. And as much as people discuss and say Ryan Day is great with the quarterbacks, Ryan Day has all these guys, coaches him up, hey, this is all day, all day, all day. Why in the world do they keep getting frustrated looks on Ryan Day's face when quarterbacks are coming to the sideline in this season? You recruit the room, as people say. Hey, you recruit this room to rise to the occasion, to compete, to make sure, hey, you got a guy here now that's a sophomore, but you got a guy that's a true freshman who's going to compete for him. And some say a a senior in high school right now who will be a freshman next year will also compete for the starting job. Why? Because you compete, you battle, you recruit a room as heavily as you do with such elite talents as as you do for these moments. Okay, great. Were the quarterbacks not being taught the right thing? Were the quarterbacks being taught the right thing, but were still making poor decisions, which was why Ryan Day had the frustrated look on his face? Uh, is it a combination of the coaching, uh, the coaches, or the coaches not finding ways to communicate to the players? What is it? Is it a miss in recruiting? I don't know, because I don't think what Kyle McCord is a bad quarterback or even an average quarterback. I think Kyle Cord is going to do good things next year. It just won't be in Columbus. And honestly, I looked at the schedule. If he ends up going to Nebraska, I saw that he had a meeting with the OC there of the Cornhuskers. Hey, Ohio State and Nebraska play next year. I do believe that game is in the shoe. And let me tell you, that will be a wild, wild, wild game. Not only for Ohio State, but also for McCord. But what's going on with these quarterbacks? Ryan Day is known as being a great quarterback coach, training him up figuring out ways to make this to make them successful. Why in the world is that frustrated look on his face so much this year? I don't have the answers to that. The only answers I have is this. Not really an answer to that question. But if there were a question, should we expect Ryan Day to have that look on his face next year? The answer is you will if the quarterback makes, t- keeps making poor throws. I try to do keep and make, and yeah, it's where you get meek, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. The words are not working right now. But no, Lincoln Kinholz definitely can win the job next year. I don't think – so there aren't many guys um, that will come out here and say – well, there shouldn't be anybody that comes out here and say, well, Kinholz can't win it or Brown can't win it. I don't think you we have enough data points for either quarterback. To come out here and say, oh, no, they can't win it. You haven't seen either one of them play a lot of football, sling the sling the rock around. What do we see? What was Kyle, uh, Devin Brown going to be utilized for in this season primarily? Running the balls of quarterback in short yardage situations. Is that what he's best at? No. Is he the best short yardage back? Because he's a quarterback on the team? No, absolutely not. Nobody believes that. But that's what you know about Devin Brown for was his running and People saying he's this athletic quarterback when really on the team, the most athletic quarterback was a true freshman who came to school in June. That's the fact. Another fact is this. If Ken Holtz takes major strides, I mean major in strides in his progression in the offseason, physically, mentally, understanding the playbook, knowing how to go through your progressions as a quarterback and how to read a defense and how to do a pre-snap read and then maybe alter that or confirm that in the post-snap, hey, he can win the job. It's going to be really, really hard for him to do it, but it can be done. What was done was another Ohio State running back entered the transfer portal. Who was it? I'll tell you who next on Locked on Buckeyes. This episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. 
There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. If you're looking at putting some money on the Buckeyes game in the Cotton Bowl, well, last I checked, they're underdogs. They are not favored to beat Missouri in the Cotton Bowl. They were favored, and then Kyle McCord entered the portal. I believe last I saw it was Missouri minus one and a half or Ohio State plus one and a half. Whichever way you want to go, put your money where your mouth is. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Once again, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Thank you for making Locked On Buckeyes your first listen or first watch of every single day. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 24-7 streaming channel. There was one Buckeye running back that left the room. And then there were two Buckeye running backs that left the room. And now there are three Buckeye running backs that have left Ohio State's running back room. Mayan Williams has said, hey, I'm going to the NFL. I got more eligibility available, but I'm going to the league. Evan Pryor battled injury. Didn't really move up, move up the depth chart this year. Hey, he's going to the portal. I understand it. And then last but not least, this one may have surprised some. Um, I completely understand it. I actually talked to somebody, that somebody being my wife, who gets a lot of my thoughts and analysis about the Buckeyes before it comes here on the show with you. I said, hey, I'm not surprised by this at all. That Chip Trainum, running back, has entered the transfer portal once again. He came to Ohio State via the transfer portal, and now he is leaving to go play football at another school via the transfer portal. The interesting thing about this young man, this running back, or (laughs) I say running back because I don't know what he's going to play at another school because he came to Ohio State, I do believe, to play linebacker, not play running back. But what happened was uh, came came here to play linebacker, wanted to come back to uh, the state of Ohio. I believe he is from Ohio. And what did he want to do? He wanted to play linebacker, thought that was going to be the best move for him. Ohio State's running back room was full. And he said, hey, I am going to be comfortable where I am playing linebacker. Next thing you know, you got, hey, Trevion out. Oh, hey, Mayan Hurt. What do you need? You need a guy to go back to the running back room and chip train him to help the room that is hit with the injury bug pretty hard. So they have some quality players in that room toting the rock. That's what they needed. That's what they got. Now, next year, I don't know if he's going to play running back or a linebacker. Uh, I think he's a decent running back, uh, can be. Uh, when he was at Arizona State before coming to Ohio State, his last year there playing for the Sun Devils, 78 carries, 402 rushing yards, played in nine games, 5.2 yards per carry, and six touchdowns. Add in four receptions and 19 receiving yards okay like nothing to say ooh or ah because of it was an amazing number that i stated but if you're, if you're averaging five yards a pop you have over 400 rushing yards you're doing something good like i'll give you credit he did some good things here at arizona state did the buckeyes mismanage this transfer or was it the situation that was in front of them that dictated how chip was going to be utilized let's go to the latter thought first and then go to the former so the situation that chip trained him had here and i want to dive more into the running back room in a little bit later maybe tomorrow show because that's one that's going to be now not to, it had to be next week got something special coming for you tomorrow a um, little more Edison jr and Kyle McCord conversation trust me you don't want to miss it but the situation was very, very odd. If I go to a new place and I go to a new place and I say, hey, I want to try this out. It's been a while since I've done this thing that I want to do, but I know what I did previously was pretty successful at it uh, at an early stage in my career in that field. But I want to go ahead and do something different. I've done it before, but it's been a while. Hey, let's go ahead, and dust off the cobwebs and make that thing happen. Great. Cool. Let's do it. 
And then what happens is a situation where you're trying to do something you haven't done in a while isn't what you thought it was going to be. Your boss comes to you and says, hey, so-and-so, we need you back over here. You're saying, whoa, 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 I came here for this. We agreed upon this. We had a handshake. We wrote things down on paper. Why do you need me? Hey, man, here's the situation. And the boss lays out to you what's going on, why it's going on. You say, okay, cool. It's not really what you wanted. It's not really your cup of tea anymore. And you say, hey, I'm cool after about six months, 12 months. You're like, hey, I am cool. I am out of here. Why? Because we didn't agree to this. This is not what I want to do. I'm not comfortable staying here doing something like this when I can go somewhere else, do this very thing where I was comfortable doing it before. Okay, cool. Now, I'm not saying Chip Trainer is going to go to Arizona State where he was before. But the situation, I do understand that needed some depth. You had, uh, you tried, caged over at linebacker a little bit. Nope, go back to tight end. Okay, cool. I get it. That was the bigger need. At the time, the bigger need for Ohio State was definitely at running back, which is where Chip Trainum went, which goes into him going back to a place where he was successful previously. This year, he had 373 rushing yards, 4.4 yards of pop. Three touchdowns and added in nine receptions this year. So those are the numbers. Honestly, it should have been more. That three touchdowns could have been doubled to six. That nine receptions could have been up to 15 to 18. That 373 rushing yards could have been over 500. And 4.4 yards a pop this year could have been over five yards a carry. Which is goes into me wondering, was his... Were his talents mismanaged? Because let's just say you want to keep him at running back. Why did he not get the ball more? We talked about this at the beginning of the season, in the middle of the season, all of a sudden, Travion's hurt. So it wasn't that we forgot about Chip, but we saw Henderson against some pretty good opponents do some pretty good things. Ryan Day wanted to say, hey, let's go to a single back system. It's not really what Ryan Day or one back – um really being the the bell cow. That's not really Ryan Day, what he wants to do at this point in the season, but he did it. So I wonder, I wonder, when it comes to Chip Trainer, was he mismanaged as a running back this year? I don't want to dive into last year because last year was as, as odd of a year for any position group that I on a team that I've covered in my time covering uh, NFL, even college football, did a year of covering the Colts, for full press coverage, and then now here for the Locked On Podcast Network, um, I've never seen, even in my years being a sports fan, I have never seen the injuries and the issues Ohio State's running back room has had simply staying healthy and simply playing the best guys consistently. I don't know what that, well, I don't know what's going on. What I do know is this, maybe they mismanaged his transfer. Maybe he should have played more in the coach's eyes. I believe he should have played more Who knows? Who knows? What we do know, the chip training is gone. The only two backs that are still here from this year, like the top five backs. I know there's there's walk-ons, TC Coffee. There's a freshman, Wiltrell Hartson. Um, You're getting a couple of running backs in next. I I get it. There's talent there in the running back room. Simple talent via via the numbers that are in that room. However, however, was it mismanaged? You got Travion Henderson and Dallin Hayton still among the top five backs this year, still on the roster for next year. I know I don't think Hayden's going anywhere. If Henderson decides to go to the NFL right now, I don't think it's the wisest decision, but I can understand why he may think it is. Coming up next, we're going to look at the CBS Sports All-American teams and discuss the two Buckeyes that found their name and found their play as a part of this exclusive group. This episode is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform. 
in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Prize picks is the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season. And now I can play during basketball season two. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. Testing my skills on prize picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can pick, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Prize picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for first deposit match up to $100. Once again, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for your first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy. This episode is also brought to you by Billiards Plus. Billiards Plus has the best selection of pool tables, game tables, shuffleboard tables, and more. And the best service in Central Ohio. And did you know Billiards Plus has top-of-the-line grills with up to 30-year warranties? That's longer than most roofs. Billiards Plus carries the best pool tables from Brunswick, Ohio, Canada, Billiards, and more. Plus, top-of-the-line grills from PK, Napoleon, Memphis, and the Griddle. That could very well be the last grill you own. The perfect gift for any occasion is in stock at Billiards Plus. Go big with an awesome pool table or shuffleboard table or a little more modest with a dartboard or poker table. No matter the season, Billiards Plus has you covered for all your indoor and outdoor entertainment needs. And the people at Billiards Plus are the best part of the experience. Kenny, Sarah, and the whole staff will take amazing care of you. Billiards Plus, visit their showroom on Dublin Center Drive in Dublin. Thank you for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen or first watch of every single day. It is time for lists to come out. Now, it's not so much the lists that come out in the offseason, the top 10 running backs in the Big Ten, the top 15 quarterbacks in the country, or maybe on the X app. Still weird to say that. People come out and rank, hey, the best college football personalities, the best head coaches, the best uh, receiver coach, the best recruiter, all of these things here that are ranking their lists. Why? To simply get attention, maybe to the network or maybe to the individual that is posting that list. Well, every offseason, we look forward to lists coming out that have the title All-American Team, CBS Sports, the AP Sports Illustrated, ESPN, everybody's going to have their list of players that make the All-American teams. May it be a first team, may it be a second team, may it be a, a squad publication as a third team, and even a, an honorable mention as well. The CBS Sports All-American team, I believe it's just a first team, a second team, and an honorable mention. There were two Buckeyes that found their way in this exclusive group. One of them was a no-brainer. He's a Heisman finalist, Marvin Harrison Jr., is a first-team All-American via CBS Sports. He actually tied with Roma Dunzi of Washington as uh, one of the, not only just unanimous, but also they tied um, there for that. Malik Neighbors, uh, junior receiver at LSU, he is also a first-team wide receiver. The other Buckeye that made this cut, Tommy Eichenberg. Now, you might want to say, Jay, we've heard analysts, you heard it before the season. We've even heard you analyze the play of Ike. Are you surprised he made it? I mean, he missed a few games this year. I mean, he was a healthy scratch against Minnesota. I don't think he has over 100 tackles. I'm a little surprised. Great for him. Absolutely great for him. But it's just, I'm surprised. Now, I'm going to go through the first team really quick. When I have a thought about some things that are going on at Ohio State that kind of Maybe annoy me. Uh, quarterback on the first team. Just going to hit some hot names really quickly. Uh, quarterback on the first of the first team for your CBS Sports All American team is Jaden Daniels. Running back Ollie Gordon, the second. 
Uh, Brock Bowers, Georgia tight end, no surprise there, is the tight end on the first team. Joe Alt, a guy that had to block some Buckeye uh, defenders um, earlier this year in week four. He's first team. Olu Fashion of Penn State, he's first team as well. Dallas Turner of Alabama is on the first team as a linebacker. Also, I hope you're ready to root for Alabama, maybe for the first time in your life, to smash and destroy and and humiliate the Michigan Wolverines. I am not rooting, just because they're in the Big Ten, I am not rooting for the Wolverines to win any playoff game, to beat Alabama or to win the Natty. No, I'm not doing that. That that is stupid. And we ain't doing that around here. No, absolutely not. For the first time in my life, I'm making this statement on this show. It might be the last time. Roll Tide. That's where I am right now with this and how I am viewing that game between the Alabama Crimson Tide and Michigan Wolverines. Roll Tide. That's where I am with it. If you, want, if you have a question about who I'm ro- voting for or rooting for, not voting, rooting for in that game, I'll say it one more time. Roll Tide. And I might do a Jalen Milrow impersonation of him <laughs> if they end up winning that game. Why aren't there more Buckeyes on this list? Have you realized and ever thought about what's happened under Ryan Day via player development that is lacking? As great as Denzel Burke was this year, not there. I didn't see his name. The corners that were on the first team, Cooper DeJean of Iowa, and then Kool-Aid McKin... <laughs> I love that name. Kool-Aid McKinstry, uh, McKinstry. Of Alabama, I haven't seen that name in a while, but uh, Kool-Aid, it's a good name. Then also on the second team corners, Terion Arnold of Alabama, and then Chris Abrams Drain of Missouri, one of those guys that the Buckeyes who have to go up against in the Cotton Bowl. What is going on with this team and player development? It's not acceptable. Is it recruiting the wrong players, or are the coaches not able to develop talent? Now, I understand there is a new offensive line coach since Ryan Day came in. There's a new OC since Ryan Day came in. There is a new linebacker coach, a new DC, a new corner and safety coach since Ryan Day came in. I understand there's been some changes to the coaching staff since Ryan Day's been the head coach at Ohio State. Things got to change quick. Because I, we, I am saying I selfishly, we, I, are used to Ohio State's defensive line and linebackers being elite, elite every year. What's happened? I don't think it's all player development. I think some of the misses that they've gotten in recruiting have forced them to recruit and hand scholarships to and accept commitments from players that maybe were not their first, second, or even third choice or fifth choice. And what do you have? Well, we need you on our team and our roster. We know you're really talented, but but man, it's just ain't what we want. I don't know if that's what they're thinking right now, but something got to change. Got to change quick because this ain't it. An All-America team with only two Buckeyes, one being an honorable mention and the other one being a receiver and Marvin Harrison Jr. I'm grateful that both are honored in this way. However, this ain't it. Something's got to change. Just like something got to change with those big uh, Ohio State fans that want to root for Big Ten teams in bowl games for the rooting for Michigan over Alabama. Y'all, that got to change. Roll Tide over here. I got to stop saying that. It feels weird making that statement here on this show. Out of here on oh, Thursday. You can follow me on X at jsteven07. Got a good, fun show coming your way tomorrow. Trust me, trust me, trust me. Got some good stuff, some good stories. Possibly a guest? (laughs) You don't want to miss it. This, This has been Locked on Buckeyes here on a Thursday. I'll see you next time.